during uh, Thomas Jefferson's presidency. There's a story about him trying to cross a river to get back to D.C. along with all his retinue with him. And unfortunately, a big storm struck, and so the banks of the river were overflowing, and it wasn't safe to cross that river unless they stayed on horseback. And as they were debating to find the best place to cross, a, <clears throat> a lone traveler who had no horse spotted the president and his party, and he walked up to the president and asked him if he'd take him over on the back of his horse. And just like that, the president got him back up on the back of his horse, and across the river they went, and they made it across safely with the rest of uh, his retinue. And as the man got off and the president continued on, somebody in the party came up to the man and said, how could you be so bold as to ask the president of the United States to take you across the river? And the man was shocked and embarrassed and admitted he had no idea it was the president of the United States. And the guy kept pressing the issue. He just couldn't believe the audacity of this guy. And finally, he responded, listen, all I know is that the rest of you had no written all over your face. But when I looked at the president, he had yes on his face. And it makes me think today, what about you and I? What do we have written all over our face when a stranger looks at us? Is it a yes or is it a no? Or do we have a yes pre uh, face like President Jefferson? That's a good question to ask, especially I think for those of us who are members of the Cathedral Parish or St. John's Parish. I think. Uh, we uh, have a special role, special mission, both of these parishes. And so we should especially ask ourselves on World Mission Sunday, what's written all over our face? Is it yes or no? For starts, you know, when newcomers or visitors come here to our parish, uh, do, they, do we notice them? You know, those people that maybe look a little bit out of place. In the Bible, oftentimes they were referred to as the alien, the widow, the orphan. Do we reach out to them? Do we talk to them? Do we make them feel at home? Is ours a yes face? You know, I've noticed though sometimes it's hard for us to put that friendly face on because we get into our comfort zone. Sometimes after Mass, maybe most of the time if we're honest, we like to talk to and hang out with our friends, those we know well. But I would challenge you to keep your eye open for that new face. And introduce yourself right away after Mass. Or maybe it's a face that, that you've seen, you know the person, you just don't know their name, but you've seen them here a lot. Reach out to them. Make a beeline to them instead of the door. Now, obviously, sometimes we have to make a beeline to the door. I have no problem with that. But every now and then, let's spot somebody during Mass and make up our mind. After Mass, I'm going to catch that person before they're out of here. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to make them feel welcome. Maybe make a new friend. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Talking about comfort zones, I have to tell you something I <laughs> saw here at the cathedral. Uh, there, you might have noticed this. There's a, a pew here without a cushion. Uh, I, I don't know what happened to the cushion. Uh, I, I just, it's on my list of things to do. Find out what happened to the cushion. Maybe it's getting cleaned, uh, but it's still not back after several weeks here. I don't know, maybe somebody got so comfortable with their cushion they took it home with them. I, anyway, I think it was two weekends ago, I'm walking to the back of the church. He's not here. I, I gave him a heads up on this, didn't want to embarrass him. But I'm walking to the back, and he grabs my sleeve and says, Father, where's the cushion for my pew? I was caught off guard. I, didn't, I said I didn't know. I, I still don't know. But I had a brilliant idea. I suggested, well, why don't you just move over to the next pew that has a cushion? What do you think he did? Oh, no, he, that's his pew. In fact, last weekend, the weekend after, there he was, still sitting on his cushionless pew. See what I mean about our comfort zone? Even when it makes us uncomfortable, we cling to our comfort zone. Man alive. I don't know if that cushion is ever going to come back. But I thought I'd be nice to the gentleman this weekend. So what I did was I stole a cushion from another pew <laughs> and put it there. So I'm sure somebody's going to come up to me after Mass. Well, not now, but would have come up to me and say, Father, where's the cushion for our pew? 
One thing I do know, though, is that they're not going to leave their pew. That's their pew. Well, this weekend is World Mission Sunday, and I think a big part of it is getting out of our comfort zone. That's part of what it means to be missionaries, to reach out, to make the beeline for that new face that we've seen. And in regard to a second collection, it means digging a little deeper. And I'd really encourage you to consider being very generous today. If you, don't, if you didn't see it yet, there's an extra envelope in the pews. And as stated on one website dedicated to World Mission Sunday, this Sunday, organized by the propagation of the faith, is a day set aside for Catholics worldwide to recommit themselves to the church's missionary activity through prayer and sacrifice. Every year, World Mission Sunday is celebrated the next to last Sunday in October. As described by Pope St. John Paul, World Mission Sunday is, quote, an, un an important day in the life of the church because it teaches us how to give. Pope St. John Paul has also spoken of the propagation of the faith's general fund of support, calling it a central fund of solidarity. In a message recently delivered by Pope Francis, we heard the offerings will be collected this weekend. They are destined for a common fund of solidarity distributed in the Pope's name by the Society for the Propagation of the Faith amongst the missions and missionaries of the entire world. And every year, the good news, I think, is the needs of the Catholic Church in the mission fields grow as new dioceses are formed, and new seminaries are set up, young men receive, answer the call, the priesthood, areas devastated by war and natural disaster are rebuilt, and also as other areas long suppressed are now opened up to hearing the message of Christ in his church. And I think that's why the involvement and commitment of Catholics from around the world is so urgently needed. So please, this year and every year, be very generous to the World Mission Sunday collection. But again, in the spirit of being missionaries, let's not forget our special mission here at the cathedral and also at St. John's. Here at the cathedral, I really believe we have a special ministry to play host to and be a house of prayer for all people for all people, all Catholics and Christians throughout Northeast Wisconsin. This really isn't our church. In a sense, we're just custodians for the people of Green Bay, the Church of Green Bay. And in this spirit, I'd ask more people to step forward to be involved in every way possible. But I want to especially emphasize stepping forward as keepers so that we can keep our doors open every Monday through Friday from 10 to 4. I really want to advertise that throughout the diocese in the next few months and encourage more people to visit their cathedral. But we'll need some people here to give some prayerful thought to volunteering in that capacity. Or also consider becoming more involved with the diocesan museum that's housed here at the cathedral. I'm very happy to say that the diocesan museum committee has met and they're determined to have that museum open every Sunday to the public from 10 or right after the 9 o'clock Mass to noon. But we're going to need people to step forward and be trained as docents or just people to, to welcome people as they come into our cathedral. So give it some prayer. This is part of the special mission of the parish of St. Francis Cathedral. And at St. John's, if you're a member of St. John's, or considering leaving the cathedral and joining St. John's. You know, at St. John's, thanks to the spirit of the Venerable Samuel Matsukeli that we celebrated in a special way last weekend, the founder of the oldest parish in Wisconsin, the ministry of the poor to the poor and the disadvantaged has continued well over 150 years. So perhaps some of St. John's members here are being called to become more involved in the deaf ministry or at the shelter. You know, I don't ever want to see our parish at St. John's just be the parish that rents out St. John's School
to the people that run the shelter. I would really like to see everyone at St. John's and certainly members from here very visible, very involved, having that yes face on, ministering to the homeless and those who need to get back up on their feet. So my dear friends, we're all called to be a missionary people through today's second collection, through a warm welcome to newcomers, and through participation in the unique ministries here at the cathedral in St. John's. Please God, may everyone see every day, yes, written all over our face.